the Samsung's S flagships are a safe bet on the Android side, but can that be said for the step down FE a couple of years later? Well, thanks to Vodafone for sending out today's product review sample. Hey guys, I'm Ryan Thomas, and this is my review of the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE in 2022. Jumping straight into pricing and availability, you can pick up one of these for around £200 on the used market. And that might sound like a lot of money for an old smartphone, but actually you're getting a lot on paper here. A 6.5 inch Full HD Plus 120Hz OLED display, a Snapdragon 865 5G, even in the UK and European markets that is important, 6 or 8GB of RAM with 128 or 256GB of storage, 4 cameras and a 4500mAh battery. It even looks the part in my opinion. Sure, it's not the flashiest, but I'm keen on the punch hole and the plastic back. It's got lots going for it. But that said, there are a few things that set this apart from other flagship devices. The haptics aren't the strongest in the world and can feel a little buzzy at times. And also the in-display fingerprint scanner isn't particularly reliable and all fast, especially in my testing, and compared to Samsung's other in-display fingerprint scanners that perform much better. Though if you can look past those, you get a really nice package here with an aluminium rail and a plastic back, it looks the part, and as well IP68 water and dust resistance, which is handy to have, if, especially if you're a UK resident. The chunky bezels and plastic back might not be for everyone, but the latter enables 15 watt fast wireless charging, which pairs nicely with the brisk 25 watt fast wired charging. Not that you'll really have to worry about topping this thing up though, because I found the 4500mAh battery, I'm sure combined with that Snapdragon 865 5G, to work really well and leave me a full day of battery life, which is really great. No need to top up during the day. Granted, my use case is a little light. I'm not a big gamer. I don't watch lots of videos on my smartphone. It's mainly just Bluetooth streaming music on Tidal or Spotify, and then I'll use social media and Footbin for FIFA and stuff like that. Really basic stuff, no real gaming on it and it would leave me with around 40% at the end of the day, meaning that if you did you know, turn up the dial as it were and do a little more on your smartphone, you should be able to get still a full day of battery life, even if you have to turn on something like power saving mode at around 10 or 15%. You might have to turn the brightness down on the screen, which speaking of screens is a pretty nice panel. It can be forgiven for not being quite HD at this price point, and actually I think that might have ruined the battery life and performance anyway, so it's good that it's full HD plus. It's bright, it's clear, it's crisp, and it has that Samsung vibrance that we've all come to expect and enjoy from an S-series product. One UI 4 on Android 12, which is what you can update this thing to, is an absolute masterpiece. I really do love One UI. I've said it many times on this channel, it is my favourite of the Android skins. It's just clean, it looks really good, it gets good quality updates at a timely manner. It's just a great package. This should get Android 13 at some point and should get a further year of security patches, so expect this to last you a good year or two more from here. It's already had two platform updates, so don't expect the world, but you are getting a good package. I'm sure this is helped along by Qualcomm's Snapdragon 865 5G, which maintains its fantastic speed. It makes its way even into the European variant of the S20 FE. This is good news not only because of the added battery life, but also the improved graphics performance by using the Snapdragon over the Exynos style chipset. Gaming really isn't an issue on this thing, and I feel like any of you up to sort of a decent level of competitive play should find the S20 FE more than viable. It performs well in games and outside of games alike, absolutely no hitching, no problems for me whatsoever. And speaking of viable, this is where I'd place these cameras. Overall, a good setup. In fact, for £200 and given the rest of the specs, it's pretty impressive that we're getting this level of camera quality anyway. The 12 megapixel main sensor definitely outputs the nicest photos of the three on the back. The 12 megapixel watch wide comes in second with a considerable drop off in quality, but in good lighting can take a great shot and with a significantly smaller sensor too. These two are then followed by the 8 megapixel 3x telephoto camera, which don't get me wrong, takes decent photos, but definitely not near the quality of the main. In typical Samsung fashion, the S20 FE boosts saturation and vibrance just a little bit. It's quite tastefully done here, it's definitely not over the top, and you can change the scene optimizer to get a more natural looking photo. Selfies and portrait mode shots are alright, but nothing groundbreaking, definitely usable, so let's give the camera package something like a 7 out of 10. Good. Great even, but definitely not spectacular. Which brings me to the conclusion, this thing was never going to blow you away. For £200, it's definitely one of the better choices on the market when it comes to Samsung. 
Samsung gives you great software updates, decent performance, especially with this Snapdragon variant. You really do want to go Snapdragon instead of Exynos. Great cameras, great battery life. It's just a great all round package. And when you consider that this thing will get another year or two of software updates, as well as the fact that it's 200 pounds, I really don't think you can go wrong with the S20 FE. It's more of a safe bet, you know, it's not flashy or fancy, it doesn't do anything super well, but it does everything pretty decently, and I think that's where the S20 FE really finds its feet. So it gets a massive recommendation for me, I want to thank Vodafone for sending out today's S20 FE review unit, it really does help out the channel. Check the links in the video description to where you can find their 5G plans, and also to where you can maybe buy one of these. Also down there are my social media links, do check those out if you could, and I want to thank my patrons for being continually supportive, so thank you so much guys. Anyway, please do like, comment and subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. I've been Ryan Thomas and I'll catch you later. Peace.